Hello everyone. Um, yeah, welcome to this Hi. evening. Uh, what's yeah, what's going on? Um, so my name's Simon Young. Hello uh, everyone. Has um, asked yeah, me welcome to, to this evening. Uh, yeah. Uh, what's, give a yeah, what's chat. going on? Um, so my name's Simon Young. Hello um, everyone. Has um, asked me yeah, welcome to, to this evening. Uh, yeah. Uh, what's give a yeah, what's chat. going on? Um, so my name's Simon Young. Young. Hello um, everyone. Has asked me yeah, welcome to, to this evening. Uh, yeah. Uh, what's give a yeah, what's chat. going on? Um, so my name's Simon Young. Hello everyone. Has asked yeah, welcome to to the scene. Uh, yeah. Uh, what's give a yeah? What's chat? going on? Um, so money. Cool. Okay. I hope that's still working. Um. So yeah. Sorry. Technical difficulties. Uh, I got asked to do a chat, and I thought, what am I? You know, what am I going to chat about? So, risk management in the mountains is something that I thought I would. Uh, yeah, have a chat about. Uh, so yeah, my name's Simon Young, and who, who's this guy who's uh, randomly going to tell you to be safer and all that sort of stuff in the mountains? Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm a Hobart kid. I grew up there, I started rock climbing in Tassie when I was about 18. as like this nerdy, goofy kid who was like always getting hit in the head with a ball and uh, not good at those traditional things. I fell, fell in love with climbing, head over heels. Um, and yeah, it just gave me something to do. It's, as a kid without much, you know, purpose or direction, uh, I fell in love with it. So it took me all over the world. I got to do so many amazing things. Got to like solo El Capitan, go mountaineering in New Zealand, climbing in Pakistan and Peru, and um, climbing like up to grade 28 trad routes, you know, 31 sport routes, all this sort of stuff. Um, through my journey doing all that sort of stuff, I got exposed to some of the aerial sports. So one night I was hanging out by myself on a portal ledge, 700 meters up El Cap, when all of a sudden, all this noise and three jumpers came zooming over the top of me and, uh, you know, I watched some parachutes open and yeah, uh, this incredible base jump happened in front of me and that planted the seed for aerial sports. So... Fast forward a few years, I was cracked the shits with climbing, got burnt out, started skydiving, which was super fun, and fell uh, in love with that again, which was really fun to just be a beginner again, um, and you know, start start at the bottom of the pile and work your way up through things, making mistakes and all that sort of stuff. Uh, I did about 500 skydives uh, as I was um, yeah working in this drop zone called Nagambi, which was super fun. Uh, long story short, I ended up leaving there and just uh, going climbing again and all that sort of stuff. And after spending a whole bunch of time doing all this skydiving and whatnot, it was finally time to go base jumping, uh, which was super fun. So I started that uh, in 2015, so five years ago. Uh, since I started, I've done about nearly 700 base jumps, which has, yeah, taken me all over the world um, and yeah it's been been super fun I've got to do all sorts of crazy things from jumping off over waterfalls in Norway to rope swings off 300 meter buildings to zip lines where you hang on and slide off down a pulley and uh, all these sort of things so yeah through through all these things um, yeah risk management becomes a bit of a you know a tool to help you um, do things safely um, oh, highlining. Also, uh, yeah, been doing a bit of highlining stuff. In 2012, I got asked to help rig or climb and rig the totem pole in Tasmania, which really was my first uh, kind of exposure to highlining. And uh, yeah, it was super fun. And since then, I've been having a play with that. And the rigging side of things is really easy, but I'm not uh, any fantastic um, highliner or anything. I just like to have lots of fun. and. Uh, get out there so yeah so in all these um, all these sort of activities risk management plays a part uh, they are somewhat dangerous we can sit here and debate all night uh, the level of danger and all those things but there are some inherent risks in doing these activities so what I would like to see is um, yeah why am I doing this I, I'd like to see people making better choices 
still sending it, still being doing all these sort of gnarly, cool shit and pushing the envelope, but doing it smartly and doing it in a, like a well-calculated way that, um, yeah, I find that, you know, worthy of respect. So, yeah, I've made a lot of mistakes. Um, everything I want to talk to you about tonight, I have done pretty much. Um, and, yeah, so I'd like to, yeah, share some of my thoughts to help help the sport progress, these, all these sports. Because what is, um, yeah, what is progression? Uh, there's a lot of different ways and metrics we can use to explore what the concept of progression means. Is it climbing harder, sending longer high lines, or is it uh, more people doing it with more skill so that they're doing it safer and we're, not, we're still able to do all this cool, crazy out there stuff, but there's less hospital visits. Because I know uh, longevity in these sports is somewhat important to me. You know, I want to be doing this stuff as an old man. So, um, unfortunately, if you're going to be around for a long time, uh, small chances of things happening can come back and bite you on the ass because just time in the sport is really important. Uh, a friend of mine, uh, you know, has a very good analogy about jar of luck and jar of skill. When you start an activity, you've got a full jar of luck uh, and an empty jar of skill. You're trying to fill up that uh, jar of skill before the jar of luck comes out, um, runs out. So, yeah, uh, there's two. So there's two kind of categories we can uh, be looking at uh, risk management and what they apply to. That's kind of uh, the physical side of things, the gear, the conditions, the environment, all that sort of stuff. Uh, and then there's the mental side of things. So that's, you know, your decision making and everything that goes along with, yeah, making good decisions. Because ultimately, I feel like these adventure activities are largely journeys of the mind. Yes, we need to be fit and we need to be strong. But if we don't have the mental fortitude um, to be able to, you know, make that strength translate out into the real world and, you know, hold it all together um, there, then, you know, there's no point in having the strongest fingers if you're, you know, too scared to get on a rope. So, yeah, everything I'll you'll discuss now will, yeah, fit into those two categories. But just remember... If you, uh, yeah, a lack of the mental skills will soon make your activity become physical, and sometimes that hurts. So, yeah. Um, thoughts on fear. So, fear is not a dirty word, um, is something, is a point I want to make. So, in this new, new world we live in, there's this two dichotomy comes up, like fear and love, which has made fear fear one of the like very bad you know naughty things that we should be trying to get rid of in our life and that uh is is a negative thing fear is a really healthy thing it can be it can be really negative but just going out and telling someone oh no fear or like you shouldn't be scared or you shouldn't be that is really uh oversimplifying um something that yeah i think has a huge place and a part in our psyche in doing these things. You're going to be scared if you're going to go out and jump off a cliff or go highlining or go rock climbing. You're going to be scared. You're going to experience fear. And that's that's sick. That's awesome. That's why we do these things, right? So, yeah, um, we just need to learn to navigate it. So we don't want to be out there being all like, oh, no fear. Just like, just be really brave. Just be really, you know, blah, a, a champion. Um, learn to navigate it and see what it's like whew, yeah i am i am really scared but uh what is it uh you know how how can that help me and what can i do with that um so you know a, a good well you know an example of that i think of is i'm a really scared participant in all these sports i do it's like when i go for a base jump for example i feel like i'm probably the, the scaredest person on the load it's funny to watch me i'll go quiet on an exit all these sorts of things, um, but I I really appreciate that deep seated fear in me because it helps me to you know go through a checklist or go through these procedures and answer all the little questions that I have nagging in my head and I'm like oh, 
shit, I'm scared, you know, what about the winds? What about my equipment? What about this? Am I current? How's my mood? All these sort of things. And then once I've, you know, checked through and like, yep, sweet, things seem, seem ready to go, then I can put that fear a little bit off to the side. There's always a hint of it remaining. But it, yeah, it helps me to then, you know, do things in a somewhat correctly ordered way. So, yeah. That's, that's my thoughts on fear, I guess. Um, because we should be somewhat scared. Um, when we're doing these activities, whether it's rock climbing, base jumping, highlining, going out hiking, whatever, there is a risk that it can happen. And it can be very, in, very easy to sort of shirk off uh, this risk or play it down and be like, oh, no, nah, you know, that would never happen to me. Um, unfortunately, if you're going to be around long enough in these activities, you will see it. someone come unstuck. And it's really shit. And it really sucks. So acknowledging the risk will help you then um, do what you've got to do, I think, to, um, yeah, to help keep you safe. So, yeah, bravado and things, you know, I don't think have a huge place. Um, I'm not saying we need to dwell on all the little micro crazy things that need to go wrong and take it all really seriously and stuff, but um, let's, yeah, let's just acknowledge that, yeah, we can get hurt. Um, this is all right. Uh, if we're going to do activities like base jumping or, you know, really extreme climbing where you're mountaineering and all that sort of stuff, you could get seriously injured and you could die. And you should think about that because it will, uh, yeah improve your dialogue with how things happen and also uh yeah give you perspective of you know your friends and family and all the other people that can be affected um by our choices in the mountains so uh yeah uh oh by the way if anyone's got any questions at any point just chuck them in the comments and uh yeah it can be about anything and i'll try and try and get there um yeah, so what, what goes wrong when we're out there? Um, lots of stuff can happen. So there's, when it comes to risk, there's a couple of main types, um, broad umbrellas, objective and subjective risk. So objective is things that we have no control over whatsoever. So rock fall in the mountains or uh, avalanches, all that sort of stuff, um, whereas subjective risk is what we choose to put on ourselves so i want to solo this rock climb or i want to you know um solo a high line or you know do a, do my first gain up off a cliff of you know forward moving backflip um that is subjective risk that you know we are taking um so either one of those you know can cause us to come undone one of them we have less control over we always can make a choice whether we're there in that environment or not the other one, subjective risk, we have a lot more control over. And I would say that most of the rock climbing you're going to do, the high lining you're going to do, and even the base jumping that most people do, it largely falls into the subjective risk category. And most of the accidents come out of something on, under that umbrella. Someone's usually made a bad choice somewhere along the lines. So overestimating your skill or naivety about uh, what it is you're getting into. Um, being in over your head. That's something that can, um, you know, cause you to, yeah, come undone. Uh, I've been in that situation myself, so the probably the most um, serious thing that I've had to, you know, a hospitalization that I've been in, uh, I got frostbite in New Zealand in the Alps. I was there in winter climbing with my friend Gary Phillips, and yeah, I had boots that probably that definitely weren't warm enough, and yeah, a few things lined up uh, that night. We were out longer than we thought we were, and it was massively colder than we were expecting than the forecast said. I had leather boots, basically summer boots, in the middle of winter in the Alps in New Zealand. Uh, my whole big toe on my uh, left foot and my second toe were frozen rock hard. I was probably like 20 or 21 at the time and I was just naive and 
way too overconfident about just the situation, how serious these mountains were and what it was I was getting into. And this, yeah, this sort of um, overestimating my own skill and naivety about the situation nearly caused me to lose my big toes. That was a huge lesson in it for me about just really respecting these environments and uh, being ready um, for when you get in there. So, yeah, uh, j just be careful uh, when you are starting out these new activities. I think of it, of, say we've got the whole sum knowledge of everything about the activities, 100%. When you start, maybe there's 20% that you know that you know. There'll be another, say, 20% that you know that you don't know. And then a whole whopping 60% of all the knowledge and skills and all that sort of stuff will be stuff that you do not know that you don't know. So it takes time to, uh, to learn all these, you know, not only learn the skills, but to learn what you need to learn. So just, you don't necessarily have to go slow, um, but don't overestimate your skill until you under, can understand the big picture kind of thing. So, yeah. Um, yeah, complacency and margin. Ma no, I'll talk about gear next. Um, gear, sometimes things go wrong when gear not necessarily fails, but gets misused. Um, so this is a question uh, someone asked me was, you know, sort of about gear and things. Generally in most accidents, there's not just gear breaking. Uh, all the stuff we use is really strong, whether it's highlining, climbing, jumping, whatever. Uh, stronger than human bodies. Uh, but it gets misused from time to time. Carabiners loaded over an edge uh, and that kind of thing. Uh, ropes rubbing on sharp edges, for example. So um, it largely comes down to the choices we make, which will affect how it is getting used, whether it's being used correctly and you know, um, more likely to do its job. So a lack of knowledge in my mind is, is acceptable, but what is the people doing about um, identifying where there's gaps in the knowledge? So when we're out doing these activities and we're using different bits of gear, whether we're borrowing someone's or whatever, we should be able to be handling all these bits of equipment and know their limitations and know little things about them. You know, Essentially read the operator's manual. Um, if you, and if you don't know uh, the answer to this, ask questions. One thing that really surprises me, mostly in climbing, highliners are pretty good at it, base jumpers, uh, okay, asking questions, you know, um, leaving your ego at the door a little bit and seeking more knowledge um, and also uh, helping pay that forward. If you, you know, happen to have some knowledge that you think could help someone out, then uh, yeah, let them know, speak up. Um, because there's, there's, you know, there's a lot of stuff that we use in all activities, things like bolts. Do you know how to assess a bolt? I'm not going to get into that now because there's heaps of information on that. If you have any questions, just ask me anytime. Um, but can you identify, like, is that surface rust okay? You know, a little surface rust is fine. If you're peeling big flakes off, yeah, maybe not. The nut on that hanger was a little bit loose. Is that still going to be okay? It's wiggling in the hole. Is it about to pop out? You know, uh, having some awareness of all this stuff, uh, I think is what you should have before you go out rock climbing because um yeah you gotta ask yourself like do i really know what i'm doing here you know do i know about this rope and uh, the hardware and all that sort of stuff and how it's supposed to be used and what are some of the track traps that you could fall into um there is a lot of information out there um and there's a lot of experienced people out there so um don't yeah, don't ever be shy speaking up. And if you are someone experienced, let's uh, let's create a better culture of um, sharing the knowledge. And it's not, you know, you're not an idiot if you don't know. It's like none of us were born with this knowledge. So, you know, create a ni nice open space uh, for learning. Leave the ego at the door. One of the, the really common things I see uh, in rock climbing is uh, not bad belaying, but belaying techniques that could be a lot better. So belaying is, you know, when you're keeping your friends safe and holding their rope. Uh, people take it really personally when you 
can try and offer advice to uh, maybe improve how they're belaying, which will then improve their experience. So, you know, their their ego of like, oh, no, I've, I've been doing this for five years kind of thing is being a bit of a roadblock to, um, yeah, their learning and, uh, yeah, improving and making better for everyone. You know, it's probably not a safety concern. It's just a tiny little thing will just, you know, make me as a leader feel a little bit safer or better. So... Yeah, so that's thoughts on gear, you know, arm yourself, knowledge is power. So then how else can things go wrong? Shit happens fast. Um, sometimes, yeah, stuff just happens. Sometimes we get thrown curveballs uh, and we want to hope that we've got enough of a margin in our skill that we can manage that situation. So what I mean by that is we don't... Um, we don't know what to expect with these things and the weirdest shit can happen out there. It's like snakes jumping out of holes when you're rock climbing, all that kind of, you know, freak, freak things. So, yeah, so margin management is uh, something I like to think about and talk about a lot, which is essentially not using up 100% of your skill. So if you're operating at 100% of what you're capable of, inevitably one day um, there'll be a curveball thrown at you and you might have to quickly spike to overcome that. If you're already redlining, then you might not have the skills or the energy or the uh, knowledge to overcome that bump. So if you pull it back in just that little bit from operating uh, at your, um, your, your true, true edge, um, when that happens, yeah, you'll have that little bit to do whatever you need to do to get yourself out of that situation and hopefully save yourself from being broken. Um, so, yeah, uh, shit happens really fast. Um, yeah. Um, abseiling and lowering. The main, uh, the main cause of bloody accidents um, in amongst a lot of, uh, you know, adventure activities. I've personally been there when my friend, a very, very, very experienced um, climber and guide and things, abseiled off the end of his rope um, about 17 metres onto me um, below. Uh, it was really shit time. Uh, and it's happened to a number of friends since. It's actually scarily common that uh, people go off the end of the rope. Um, and... Yeah, it's, it's so avoidable, which um, I guess comes into, you know, somewhat of complacency. We're in these, these environments so often, they just become so um, second nature to us, belaying. You know, I've spent hours and hours and days and days of my life belaying, so it can very easily become something that you just think, oh, it's been, it's always been okay, it's always been totally fine. But the seriousness of it and how quickly shit can go wrong... Um, can escape you so build build good habits you know put knots in the end of the, your, your rope um, make sure your ropes on the ground before you touch it. I know it sounds like really silly but um, I am probably the most scared when I'm abseiling getting off stuff you know I've worked for the last over a decade as a rope access technician I'm still like double triple chip checking all my shit when I abseil because I'm scared you know like I, I acknowledge that I am exactly the kind of person that could have an accident because I am uh, someone who's out there doing stuff and that's all you need to do to be um, a candidate. Um, and miscommunication, uh, that's, that's caused a lot of issues when someone is threading a rock climb. So, you know, they're taking all the gear off, they clip in, untie to pass the rope through a fixed metal ring. And then for whatever reason, the person on the ground is not there to catch them when they thought they were and they sit back on the rope and so communication and making good habits of good communication is really important pretty much every pitch i do still you know uh, i was out climbing this weekend um and just making sure that like before i go up with a smile on my face to say hey i'll uh, i'll just clip in thread it and lower hey sweet you got me good and just doing that before I go up just means I, you know, I know that I've tried to really help uh, miscommunication not come into it. Um, on on that, I think lower off sport climbs. This is a specific piece of advice. 
Um, don't thread them and abseil and stuff. As soon as it gets a little bit steep or traversy or whatever, um, you're trying to hold your rope and get gear out or whatever. If there's a person on the ground, just use them. If you're worried about the, the wear on the rings, just chip in 10 bucks to your um, local rebolting fund a year and that'll more than cover stuff. Um, yeah, so some, some of my specific survival strategies. Um, yeah, uh, che checklists and systems have, uh, you know, that's be systematic um, and be aware of distractions. So one of the best risk management things, tools we have are checklists. Whenever a pilot starts a plane, they have laminated folders where they will go through a list, making sure they have thought of everything. So I'm not saying you need a little pocketbook of um, checklists and shit in your pocket. But come up with systems for whatever your activity is, whether it's highlining. Um, usually I start from you know the back of the anchor to the line and I just go through everything, looking at every connector, down one leg, down the next leg, down the other leg, and just be systematic. Uh, when I'm base jumping, uh, I have my rituals. I have my way that I pack the little pilot chute. I have the things that I check on my rig and I start at the top and I work to the bottom because the bottom's the most important bit where your pilot chute sits, which is the bit that pulls your parachute out. Um, so yeah, have systems um, and make sure you're not distracted or when someone's tying in or something like that. Um, yeah, it'll help you. Your personal progression. Give it some thought uh, and seek advice from someone more experienced. So. We don't have elders in our communities so much anymore. Um, the rate of expansion of things like climbing means a sport that used to be a lot harder to get into, so less people did get into it. So the people getting into it had more exposure to the experienced people to help, so they could help guide the newer members um, on their journey. That's not the case anymore. With the advent of climbing gyms and you know everyone's getting into highlining and everyone's doing a first jump course these days, because we're you know our exponential growth in the sport is making it harder to have direct relations with really experienced people. They probably want to help you, the experienced people, so don't be scared to ask. Um, and if they do not want to help you, they're probably a dickhead anyway. So. Seeking advice and having some under, some idea of like what are, what are the things I need to work on or what are things that I could work on to help me progress as a climber. Um, I'm, you know, I'm talking less about strength stuff, although that's somewhat important and that'll help get you out of scary situations. But more just to, you know, what are, what are some things I'm unaware of, you know? Uh, what are, is there anything I should be looking up or some homework I could be doing in my own time? Um, yeah, which brings me to like, the, to the importance of self-assessment and honesty with um, you know you assessing your own capabilities. It's a cliche as old as hell, but knowing your limits. Um, things become a cliche for a reason, but um, I you know I, I kind of like this. It's like, are you grumpy? Are you tired? Are you um, are you actually not that good at this one thing that you really want to be good at, but you know um, you're not that good. Um, for example, so being able to leave your emotion somewhat at the door and you know, uh, know what you're good at and know what you're bad at, uh, I think is really important. So um, working on your skills of very honest self-assessment uh, will, I think, really help. Because, yeah, this brings me on to biases, our brains. So we have so many biases going on in our life, all these little filters. Um, that are influencing the information that is coming, you know, through our senses to our brain. Um, and there's parts of our brain which choose which bits of information our brain gets because it can't process at all. So we need to be aware of what biases our brain are throwing at us. Uh, some some examples of these biases are, you know, comparative optimism. Sometimes we'll Put our, you know, our own abilities above everyone else's. Like, oh, it won't happen to me. You know, oh, that happens to everyone else because oh, they're just a bit, you know, a bit silly. That's why they abseil off the end of the rope. It's like, no, they're actually really, you know, really capable people, and you're just as likely, you know, me, so I'm young, as making these mistakes. Um, a confirmation bias can be really bad when we're looking to do risky activities because. Uh, potentially, we're only going to see what we want to see. We're only going to see the reasons why we should solo that um, 
whatever climb or high line. Why we, sh you know, the, the conditions aren't bad. They're fine, you know. A bit of a headwind's fine on this building, you know. I can I can do a base jump off it safely. Um, so yeah, you know, beware beware of that um, bandwagon effect. Uh, when we're in other people, we're more likely to do what everyone else is doing, you know. And it becomes much harder to do what you think is right. So. Um, you know, are you making that choice to do whatever just because someone else thinks it's going to be okay? You know, are they right? Are they wrong? You know, don't be scared to, to call them out. Um, and yeah, beware of how many assumptions you make. I guess that fits in with comparative optimism. Um, so yeah, just remember that there, our brain is a computer and it is fallible. And sometimes we get tired, sometimes we get whatever that makes our, um, yeah, decision-making process go to shit. Visualization, really important tool. Um, if you can't visualize something, you probably can't do it. So I'd highly recommend um, when, before you're doing these really dangerous things, um, you know, you're probably doing it anyway. The night before, you're visualizing these, uh, these routes. So uh, I, about a year ago, did a free base in the Blueys, um, 40 meter rock climb where, you know, I abseiled in, just had a parachute on my back. I, yeah, I knew every move, like I tried it a couple of times on top rope, luckily I have a good memory, and I could remember every move on that before I did it, so, um, yeah, visualization really helped me there. Um, another strategy I use, uh, the Swiss cheese analogy, um, you, so the Swiss cheese thing is a, a saying when you get a number of random slices of cheese and suddenly the holes line up, which means something bad has happened generally so when all the a few random uh, unrelated things or events add up to um, you know give you a bad day so if there's a number of things already happening um, be careful so what I mean by that is if you're you know um, a base base jumping analogy is really good say I was going to an exit um, and I'm on current I haven't jumped in a while that's one thing, you know, I'm, I'm not current. Uh, the plan changes suddenly. Um, oh, we were gonna go do this thing, which is what I've been sort of mentally preparing, and at the last second we decide, no, we're gonna jump this other thing, it's a different plan, it's a different thing. You know, that's another, you know, another um, hole in cheese. Um, and then say, you know, oh, I, I forgot my gear, so I have to borrow my gear, borrow a, a parachute off my friend or something, it's like, boom three strikes for me personally something like that I'd probably just walk down or, or not jump it so um, beware of the little factors stacking onto on top of each other because um, yeah they can cause you to um, have a bad day as well something I do a lot um, with myself is another strategy is read back the current conditions and the current thoughts I'm making as decisions in the voice of a news reader or like I'm reading it from a news article so you know I'll think to myself he was approaching the edge he'd, uh, where he was going to go for a jump uh, he'd noticed a slight wind that was different before but he thought to himself no nah, it should be should be okay I think I still have the skills uh, when he you know was getting his gear out he noticed uh, something was odd he made a small packing error nothing big but he had to fix it and change it and he was feeling a little unsure um, and yeah so just reading reading things back like that can really uh, help be objective about it which comes back to honest self-assessment is trying to separate yourself from what's actually happening and remove your emotional investment of I really want to go for a jump I really just want to like send it to you know being objective and like oh actually it's probably a shit idea um, so yeah I that's something I use all the time um, especially when I'm soloing because I feel that uh, or, you know, by, by that I mean doing adventures by myself which I quite like you know maybe you know I used to go out for jumps by myself a bit and it's a whole different ball game and I really like it um, but that really helped because usually we're ha that's happening with a partner anyway. Um, yeah. Um, another thought on progression and strategies is waiting till you're ready. Um, a lot of people can want to rush and get get to the end, um, you know, right away. 
you've got the rest of your life to do all these things so um, don't rush you know save some things to get into um, I can assure you that you know uh, if you're climbing nothing changes you can go climb like super super hard things you're still doing the same thing so um, going out try and get to the top of a rock getting to the bottom hanging out with friends so waiting till you're ready is and not sort of shortcutting steps is a you're going to keep you safer and less likely to hurt yourself but you're going to enjoy what you do more when you have more awareness if you're only just scraping through you're focusing entirely on everything that you need to do just to scrape through if you have waited until you've got a bunch more skill you will have you know more margin uh, like I talked about earlier but you'll have more awareness so you'll be noticing the little things the little flowers on the ledge that you just flew over or uh, something like that so your field of awareness will just really really open up um, and you might have more fun we only ever get one first shot at doing a rock climb or a whatever so you know um, honor that and make it make it awesome um, how do we communicate with each other? I think that comes into risk management really well. Sometimes uh, we need to tell or sometimes we need to hear that uh, what we're doing maybe isn't the best, uh, best idea or uh, whatever. So uh, how we do that is really important. Um, this is where we kind of need to break the ego down and not be too emotionally invested in our actions, which can be really hard and I'm probably the worst for that in the world. Um, but creating an environment where we can talk about these sort of things and questions are encouraged um, I think is really important and where we can have actual like good discussions the the biggest worst thing you can do is a whoa bro kind of speech if you're you know you see someone's doing oh, something a little dodgy at the crag that you're climbing or highlining or whatever um, barreling in there and being like whoa dude what are you doing you're a, you're a bloody idiot bro all that stuff all they're going to do is instantly get their back up and not want to talk to you. So practice good communication of being friendly. Being, hey, how you doing, man? Um, so, you know, normally normally people don't just lower off, you know, one quick draw or something. You know, it can be really easy. Just chuck another one on and, you know, um, have, you know, some good, positive, friendly communication like that uh, is really important and, you know, is hard. I still really struggle. Um, with that but if you do see something say something because it's better that you said something and they think you're a dickhead than um, yeah something happens and you feel shit um, yeah I've, I've unfortunately got you know friends I really wish I'd said stuff to and I think about that a lot more than the you know people I've told are a dickhead so um, yeah if you see something say something um, but yeah if your friends insist they really want to do something dangerous, um, you kind of need to support it or not be involved um, and let them know. Um, I've been around friends that really want to do something, like I'm going to do a double gainer, double backflip off this exit. And I'm like, oh, I don't think that's a good idea, dude. You know, like, you're not that car or whatever. Um, but they're like, no, 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 so, yeah, I'm going to do it. Um, uh, then, yeah, I will voice my opinion and then get behind it and be like sweet uh, you know what I think but if you're gonna do it anyway then I need to support it because it's better that I am creating a better mental space for them to do what they need to do than bring in my negative juju um, so yeah um, yeah what else did I say um, your ego yeah check your ego um, it wants you dead uh, guys, we are so much worse at this. And again, I'm, I'm the worst offender in the world of it. But um, masculine bravado, yeah, we can have some banter and um, all that sort of stuff. But uh, we, yeah, just need to be careful of, um, you know, mocking people that don't know and all that sort of stuff. Because, uh, yeah, guys can be bad at that. So, yeah, uh, let's be better with that. Um, yeah, let's be humble. Let's see continual improvement because uh, there's far more to know than any of us will ever find out. So, um, yeah, keep it really humble. Um, complacency. I don't have much more to say, so don't worry. You can do whatever you got to do soon. Um, complacency. That is still the number one killer in our sports, and I think always will be. So, um, 
yeah, we've got to, yeah, complacency creeps up in so many ways. Um, yeah, the slow creep of a change of the way you do things is what can help bring you, you know, undone, bring you closer to having an accident. Um, we have to be beware of that slow creep because, event, you know, we start and we have really high standards of whatever it is we're doing and slowly we think, oh yeah, it's alright, oh yeah, yeah, it's alright, oh yeah, yep, yeah, it's still alright, oh, nah, I don't need to do that, nah, nah, sweet, I've got all this, I've all got this. And slowly, it can happen over years or whatever, our standards have gone from up here to down here and we're just that much closer to sort of having... Uh, an accident. So, you know, things like tying knots and the end of your rope, you know, I've never gone off the end of my rope. So, you know, I, I, I'm good. I, you know, I don't need to do, put a knot in or something. And, um, the, these kind of little creeps and habits and, um, you know, not wearing a helmet. I'm as bad as anyone for that, you know, the crag where I know I've watched the last, you know, three times in the last week, a small rock come off and I'm still there climbing without a helmet. Like why that is complacency. And, um, yeah, it's okay to change our thing, our, the way we do stuff, but why? Um, I'm pretty consistently asking myself, am I complacent yet? Not, you know, not am I, um, but assuming it's going to happen because it will. Um, so, yeah, make that assumption. Um, and, yeah, don't, yeah, don't let risk management become a chore. I feel like it's been a very, like, serious, you know, whatever, rah, rah, rah. Uh, when I'm out there doing all this stuff, you know, I don't feel like I'm always just like, oh, shit. I'm having systems in place to make sure that, you know, everything's in order. So I've got my checklist, that, you know, I, when I'm base jumping, are the conditions good? Yep, sweet, they're favourable, they're good. Uh, am I good? Is my mind good? You know, have I got the energy? Yep, sweet, I'm good. Is my gear good? Yep. I know it's packed, and I run through the pack job in my head. I'm good, highlining, you know, I check the anchor, I check everything. Then sweet, I've, you know, I've made sure it's good, and I'm going to continue to, you know, check it throughout the session. Um, but then, yeah, you can, uh, if you have good systems, it allows you to not focus on it, or not uh, to, to, you know, remove that fear um, a little bit of the equation. So that fear was good, because it made you, check stuff and feel confident that sweet i'm good i can i can just focus on getting uh, into my zen flow state um so yeah that's why i think it's really important because it'll uh, helps progression when we can be smart about stuff and then that keeps us safe to focus on shredding and sending um yeah that's what i reckon so that's pretty much um, my ramblings or thoughts on um, different ways and different thoughts of um, you know how things can go wrong in the mountains and all that sort of stuff. Uh, yeah, I still yeah uh, think everyone should be out sending it and taking risks and doing that sort of stuff and acknowledging that, um, yeah, we do have to, um, yeah, get out there and live our lives, but why not be smart and why not increase our odds? So... Um, yeah. Cool. I'm just looking at one of the questions. Um, regarding... Um, that doesn't make sense to me. Um, yeah. Regarding, like, ass assessing rock quality. So, that's a huge thing. Um, learning how... That I haven't spoken about. Learning how to uh, assess the quality of rock. So, loose rock around edges really dangerous we don't want to get complacent around edges because um, a number of people have hit the floor just um, being falling off a cliff top and that sort of stuff and that that's a really shit way to go so um, yeah learn more about rock quality and like where do bolts go how much is um, stone weigh you know it's about two and a half tons a cubic meter for the average rock um, and yeah that can really help um, yeah sweet uh, I hope you've got something out of this talk and yeah, I'll see you out there on the cliff sometime. If you've got any questions ever about anything, um, I'm always pretty open for a chat. Uh, so yeah, reach out. I'll see you out there.